Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Davenport's Cabaret. At this time, please take a moment to silence all cell phones and noise-making devices that may interrupt this evening's performance. Feel free to remove your masks if you're sitting in a seat, and also the taking of pictures for this performance is absolutely welcome and encouraged. Thank you, and please enjoy the show. And now, Davenport is proud to present Nikki Crespin! It's not where you start, it's where you finish. It's not how you go, it's how you land. A hundred to one shot, they call you a klutz. Can't outrun the favorite, all you need is the guts. Your final returns will not diminish. And you can be the cream of the crop. It's not where you start, it's where you finish. Unfortunately, the answer is be famous first. <laughs> so, um, 
I couldn't start there, but you know, they have name recognition. But I was thinking about why people come and see famous singers do a solo show like this. And it's because a lot of the times it's because they want to hear them do the things that they're known for, familiar pieces, signature pieces. Um, unfortunately, since I'm not famous, I don't have any signature pieces yet, someday. So that's <laughs> kind of the uh, concept for the show is born out of that. It's always good when you have to start by explaining the concept of your show. Um, <laughs> I, a, a plus. Uh, who here, I can't really see everybody, but who here has heard of, uh, I'm just going to spit out some woo woo kind of stuff, who has heard of manifesting? Or a secret, or a vision board. Honestly, I think the secret is kind of BS, but you know, all of that sort of stuff um, is about asking the universe for what you want and then acting as if you have it, and the universe delivers it to you. And I feel like I have done all that I can uh, on my end to kind of make some of these things happen for me. But you know, it's frustrating when when you feel like uh, your you getting your dream is is someone else's decision, whether that's a casting agent or an agent in general, or a boss, if you're not a performance-minded person and you have a normal boss, um, and your, your future is in your boss's hands, it's very frustrating. So I'm leaving it in the hands of the universe, and everything I'm singing tonight is kind of me asking for what I want. So this first song is from a show that I became obsessed with when I was 15. I have been working on this song for 15 years, and it's gotten a little better. <laughs> Uh, just to kind of set up the story a little bit, um, this is from a show called The Light in the Piazza. Um, the character who sings this, her name is Clara, she's from North Carolina, and uh, she's just met a boy that she's smitten with, and now she's walking around an art gallery in Florence, um, thinking about what it's been like to be in Italy so far. Clara, by the way, has always played very young, late teens, early 20s but her character is 26, and that's an important plot point. It's like a real thing, if you know the show. It's important that she's older than she looks. Um, that being said, that means hopefully I still have a few more years. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
to Elizabeth on that. Uh, this is Elizabeth Chosner. <laughs> She Loves Me, and uh, You've Got Mail, if you don't know it, it's kind of an enemies to lovers situation, if you're a fan of that trope, um, and You've Got Mail and She Loves Me share the same source material, except for in the musical version, um, instead of rival booksellers in the 90s communicating over email, they are rival uh, store clerks in a Hungarian perfumery in the early 1930s, so super relatable. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, but it's, I love this character, um, Amalia is her name, and she, I relate to her in that uh, she has, she's a romantic, but she's not a very productive romantic. <laughs> she has a, a, a list of qualities of some, what she wants in a person, um, but she has no, she kind of shies away from going out to actually find them. Relatable. Uh, <laughs> so, um, just to set this one up a little bit. Amalia is writing to her pen pal, whose name is Dear Friend, and uh, he stood her up on what was supposed to be their first date the night before. She's writing him a letter, and unbeknownst to her, the identity of Dear Friend is George, who is her rival co-worker at the perfume. <clears throat> Dear Friend, I am so sorry about last night. It was a nightmare in every way. But together, you and I will laugh at last night someday. Ice cream. He brought me ice cream. Vanilla.
<laughs> include my wants, because the show is called I Want Song. Um, my wants about a future relationship. Um, it was really hard to come up with things. So I decided to kind of go with the theme of what do I want to feel in a relationship. Because like Amalia, I also have you know a laundry list of qualities, but I don't want to paint myself into a corner cosmically by asking for something that doesn't actually exist. So um, I chose these next two pieces uh, because they kind of hit on uh, two important themes to me, one of which is letting someone surprise you when you've already made up your mind to be miserable. <laughs> and the other is uh, having someone who makes you feel safe without feeling like they want to fix you. Oh no, not now. Please, not now. I just settled into the glass half empty, made myself at home, and so I now. Please, not now. I just stopped believing in happy endings, horrors of my home. But you had to come along, didn't you?
pulled something out of the micro microphone stand while I was singing that, and then I had to pretend like I didn't. Um, <clears throat> all right. <laughs> Sorry, that was it. Uh, this <laughs> we're back to musical theater uh, for a moment. Um, so back in early 2020, before times, as we say, uh, I had a coaching for a competition that I was going to go do in New York. This was like January of 2020. And uh, I was working with my coach, and I showed her my seven pieces, because that's how many we needed for the competition. And I was like, oh, I know the theme of my set is like sad, golden age ingenues, because <laughs> uh, it kind of was. And she was like, no, actually, you know what it is? It's women who know what they want, but they don't know how to get it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, that's correct. Um, so uh, these next two songs are sung by characters who are, you know, in the same boat. Um, they don't know exactly how to get out of the situation that they're in. Um, the first one is a French girl named Amelie. Uh, there will be an accent. I fully allow you to make fun of it as much as you want. It's not great. Um, and uh, she wants to be the kind of person who makes people's lives better, but she's too shy to do that for herself. And the other one is my girl, my longest lasting dream role, Cinderella. Uh, <laughs> from Into the Woods, not from Cinderella. Cinderella from Into the Woods. She's like complex and deep and stuff. And um, <laughs> she finds herself with a choice to make after a ball.
cares? Knowing this time I'd run from him. He spread pitch on the stairs. I was caught unawares. And I thought, well, he cares. This is more than just malice. Better stop and take stock while you're standing here stuck on the steps of the palace. You think, what do you want? Any place I hang my hat is 
when you don't have the means to go see shows, live concerts, musicals, that sort of thing, um, you get by with recordings. And when I was young and broke, I lived and died by the solo albums that my favorite musical theater performers put out. Um, Audra McDonald, Kelly O'Hara, uh, Laura Benanti, Barbara Cook, a um, little bit of Barbara Streisand, um, Kristen Chenoweth, and Sutton Foster. I loved what they did with those albums so much. They would do songs from shows they had never been in, which you wouldn't hear otherwise. Um, they did all sorts of pop and folk arrangements. They did jazz. They did standalone cabaret tunes, contemporary art song, mashups. They could change the keys to whatever they wanted to, which was like, blew my mind. Um, and so it's always been a dream of mine to someday record some sort of album like that. If somebody just gave me a chunk of money, honestly, that's probably what I would do with it. Rent out a recording studio and, you know, put out an album for fun. And, um, uh, what I listen to outside of musical theater is a lot of folk, a lot of indie rock, a lot of singer songwriter stuff. And so this next song is a Joni Mitchell song that, yeah, that I fell in love with uh, last year. And um, I'm trying not to fall off the stool. This dress is slipperier than it looks. And um, she is someone, I think, who writes a lot about uh, escaping, about running away from things. Um, Karen, I she agrees with me. <laughs> And um, uh, though I don't necessarily agree with her on you know, that point, um, Cinderella might run away so you don't have to make a choice. Um, I get it.
to that. Um, I have a couple of thank yous. Uh, very first is for Elizabeth. She's <laughs> Where you live, where you live. 
live. Life is how you die. It's a world of laughter, but life passes you by. It's a small, small.